Welcome again to uh, Selkirk College and the launch of the Digital Basin. Um, this is an online mapping tool that uh, has really only been live for about a week and a half now. So we look forward to um, showing you how, all, how this works and then looking forward to hearing your feedback to, to see how it worked for you and how it didn't work for you so that we can fix it in the coming weeks and months. Anybody know of or aware of the uh, 2008 State of the Basin Report that Columbia Basin Trust did? A couple of you guys. So when RDI was formed back in 2011, uh, we took over responsibility of that State of the Basin reporting. And um, so the first thing that we did was create this 2012 uh, snapshot report, which is um, which has little snippets of information that you might find interesting that are really intended to sort of whet your appetite and get people interested and understand what indicators are in general. Um, and so we have copies of all these, all these things um, over on the table or up here if you're interested in any of those. So we've got this um, 2012 report, uh, snapshot report, and then this past year, uh, in October, we came out with our 2013 State of the Basin report, which again uh, is, is a short, snappy little thing that uh, has little bits of information that are met, meant to whet your appetite for the long report. So all the information that's in here is also in here, but in much more detail, as well as uh, several, many additional indicators. There's 70 some odd indicators here. All the information that's in this long report is now on the digital basin. So if you're more comfortable and you need to get to sleep at night, you can read something like this. <laughs> or uh, if you're more comfortable reading a, a hard copy, uh, you can use this. Or you can just go online and get all the same information through the digital basin portal. Um, and all of these uh, things are available to you through our website, cbrdi.ca. You can download PDFs of this. The smart, one of the clever things we did with with this PDF uh, is that you can actually, as you're reading through it and there's something that you find interesting, we actually uh, provide a direct link to the source of information that we came to. So if you're reading on, um, uh, just pick a random uh, information on language spoken most often at home, uh, we have a direct link to the 2011 state uh, census of Canada where we access that data. So you can just as you're reading through, click right to it and then take you to the source. And then of course in, in the references section in the back we also have all the links there. So that's kind of a handy tool if you want to be reading through the PDF version online. But as I say, all that information is on the um, digital basin, so and that's what we're here to learn about. To introduce to you what indicator reporting is and and it, essentially what it is, it's, it's, uh, it's tracking um, pieces of information, numbers that sort of capture a larger system in, in one uh, number, as opposed to uh, systems are very complicated and, and finding a good indicator uh, is, um, uh, sort of tells you something about the larger system. And so if you're, you have a, a number that tells you about the larger system at one point in time, you follow that five years down the road and you see if that number's improved or, or gotten worse and that will help tell you whether or not the management actions you're taking or the decisions you're making are having a positive or negative effect and, and point to challenges. Um, also on the website, there's a little four minute and 22 second video that's great, sort of tells you how to use it. So if you remember nothing about this or how to use it, there is that video available to you. And there's also a 10-page uh, um, document uh, walking you through the different functionality of this. So this is our digital basin. And uh, there's uh, three separate areas I'm going to show you. The first is on the top left here, this thing called Map Tools. And it's got, uh, once you click on Map Tools, there's several different options. And uh, my favorite one is this first one called Reset Map. And it's like your undo button. It takes you, if you've got a bunch of different layers turned on and you're zoomed in and, and you just want to start fresh, you click reset map 
and it zooms out to your default, covers the entire Columbia Basin. It's turned off all the layers, and I'll show you how to turn those on. It's basically, start again. Um, then you've got your zoom in function. You click that, and then you can, uh, again, left click in any area and draw a box around the area you want to zoom into. You want to click it and it zooms into that spot. There's also a zoom out button that does the same thing. And a previous extent button. So if you're, if you're in one spot and then you go to another and you want to go back to the first spot, you just click previous extent and it takes you back out to wherever you were at the last at the last point, in this point. In this instance, it was the whole basin. Um, I prefer to keep it on this pan button. And you click on the pan <coughs> button, and you can just, just, just like pretty much any mapping tool, if any of you guys have used Google Earth even, is uh, hold the button down, and you can pan around like that. The other ways you can zoom in and out are if your mouse has a roller on it, you can roll in and out like that. So if we want to roll into Castlegar, you just hover over Castlegar and it starts to focus on Castlegar. And there's also these uh, zoom in and zoom out buttons here. So lots of different ways to navigate around the map. But like I say, I like to keep it on the pan. It allows me to grab, a, grab this and let's move over to Nelson. So that's the that's your map tools, and and if anybody's familiar with with GIS programs, that should be fairly uh, similar to what you've used in the past. Um, so that's that. And then the next thing are the uh, layer. This is layers tab. This you can uh, if it's not visible, it's <coughs> over on the right hand corner here. Um, you just click on that and it expands it. And then there's three. Uh, Three things within. I'm not going to update. Then this, the TOC or Table of Contents, um, and I'll walk through this and show you some of the layers. This is where all the data is. The next thing over will be the legend, and then base maps, and I'll show you what those are in, in just a minute. So we have. I, I guess I'm not. How many layers are actually in here? Actual data layers over 200. Over 200 layers here. You won't here. see that in the table of contents because a lot of them are grouped together. Yeah, so there's there's just a whole pile of data, and we had to put them in some, some categories. And in some cases, uh, it's it's not uh, always obvious where uh, the particular piece of information you want to get is. But we tried to make it as intuitive as possible. Um, and how we did that was we split it up at the first cut into four different categories. You've got uh, your economic, your social, your cultural, and your environmental category. So within this TOC or table of contents, we're in the economic pillar right now. And the economic pillar is, and each, each one of these four pillars is further broken down into four separate areas. So in this case, we've got infrastructure, business climate, workforce, and housing. You can expand any one of those four, and this is where you actually get the data layers within here. And so the housing has four different ones, the workforce has about 20, 30, um, depending on what you're looking for. So that's your economic pillar. You can scroll down on this uh, using this, this this thing on the right. Uh, click on the environmental pillar, and again, this will be broken down into four separate categories: biodiversity, land, and food. Food is an example of something that we really weren't too sure where that belongs. Food is uh, important uh, to all the pillars, really. Um, it's a, an economic driver, it's a cultural, it, it's, it's a social, um, and it's also an uh, environmental issue. So uh, it ended up along with the land and food uh, category. So I'm going to expand this and show you my personal favorite layer, which is the fire history. So we've got um, all of the fires that have occurred in the Columbia Basin since 1919 on this thing. And so if you want to turn on a layer and make 
that stuff visible. You just click on this little box right here and the little check mark shows up and that layer is now going to be visible on here. Some of them have a time slider, like this, see these, these little things here? And what they are is you can select, with this fire history one, you can select uh, what years you want to be able to make, you want to make visible for the fire. So in this case, I moved the time slider going back to 1997. And so this map will show every fire that's occurred uh, since 1997. Um, once that's set, you can close the time slider. I'm going to move this, this layers button out of the way so we can see the map more. And who was here in 2003? Remember the fire season of 2003? Every community you go to, there's a fire in 2003. Early August, it was going off. Um, so August 8, 2003, there was a, a fire caused by lightning. It was 8,000 hectares. Um, and that's just one example. You can, the first thing that most of, that I did anyways, oh yeah, I remember this is the one here by, um, close to Whitewater in the, in the park. Um, if we're closer to Castlegar, there might not be something that's, uh, since 19, there might not have been any fires between, uh, since 1997, you can change your time slider to whatever you want. And you'll, you'll quickly discover that uh, there was a lot of fires uh, back in the day. So we've just got this one layer turned on. If you want to get more information on any of these layers, you click on this little circle with the arrow next to it. Okay? You click on that little circle with the arrow next to it, and the data pops up. The data tab where you can um, set, you can tell it what you, uh, what data you want to come up, and then there's a little export button. So with this, in this case, um, the, the default setting is if you're looking for a uh, fire of any cause, so either person or lightning, from the year 2012. Okay? So there's 24 fires in our database that happened in 2012 um, uh, in the Columbia Basin. If you're looking for um, just what happened within uh, the map extent. So if you're just, uh, if you're zoomed into a particular area, let's just zoom there a little bit, and you want to get information on all the, uh, all the data that's within the map extent, you can click filter by location and it'll filter only though, it'll give you data only on that pieces of, those pieces of information that show up here. You click this export button and it gives you an Excel spreadsheet of, of uh, all the data onto your laptop. And again, you can do that for any of the layers we have. I've just got the one fire history layer turned on right now. And to get rid of this data tab, we want to see, again, more of it. You just close it down like that, open it back up. And if you want to see the whole tab, just off the screen here, but there's a little button here with arrows pointing out. Click, click on that, and then you see the whole list. And just like the, the function that Jonathan showed you, if you're interested in this piece of information, you click the little magnifying glass, and it takes you right there. Okay? We want to see the map again, so I'm going to reduce that. And then um, you can. Um, well, we've only got the one layer turned on right now. You want to see multiple pieces of information in the same map. No problem at all. You can click on just a random, you can turn on, say, where all, where you guys all get your water from. So it's, we've got all the community watersheds on here, um, and it's got data associated with each of those. We've got uh, the Norton's community watershed, and it's got some information associated with that. So that that's available to you and the fire data is still available to you. Now, a lot of our data is, um, or some of our layers are, um, cover the entire area. So it's like a, a blanket that covers the whole area. So if we're gonna turn on, what should we turn on? So, um, 
dark workforce, median income total. And so what this is doing is it's covering everything. It covers the whole area, and I'll just zoom in a little bit so we can see it a bit better. So right now we've got three layers on. We've got the fire layer on. We've got the community watershed layer on. And then we've got the median income layer on. And once it takes a minute to load, the median income layer throws a blanket over top of everything. And so you're no longer able to click. Maybe you are, well, in this case you can. So in cases where you've got a, something like median income that you've got median income for the entire uh, base and it'll cover up what's underneath it and in some cases it won't. I guess that's sort of random. But if you've got two layers where that cover everything, so you've got the median income layer and average wage, average wage uh, in the, uh, layer, um, it'll only, you'll only be able to click on one. So that's a little bug question. So what's the recommended browser then for it if it is? <coughs> Thank you for asking. Uh, Google Chrome is the one I always use. Firefox works. The one that I ha I've seen that has troubles is um, Internet Explorer. Imagine so that. I have an update though. <laughs> so we took it through. Um, you waiting for that? The latest versions. The latest version of Internet Explorer's work works great. I took. Okay. I tested everything. Also Safari on Apple works well. Just stick with the late versions. Yeah. The yeah. So we did have someone that had that it wasn't working for them. Um, but it must have been an earlier version. Of yeah, if it's earlier version, version, it will not work. We're, we're on the TOC, in the layers section here, table of contents. You can't remember what you've got on, or you don't know what it means. The legend will show you only the layers that you have uh, turned on. So in this case, we've got our fire history, so the reds are fires, these are community watersheds, and then this is the median income. You might have to scroll down, but that's that answers where that is. Um, and then a handy little feature we have are various different base maps. The base maps are basically the, the, uh, what you start with, the, the blank slate, but it's not blank, there's the data there. We've got our own uh, RDI um, uh, default base layer, but we have uh, this, and these are all from Esri, I believe, right? They're, they're not under our control. Oh, yeah. you, can, you can scroll through these and find one that you like best. My personal favorite is this top one, which is um, aerial imagery. It's, it's essentially, I believe, the same imagery as Google Earth. Um, I turn that on um, to be able to uh, get a better sense of what's going on. And then again, the closer you zoom in, the resolution will improve. But every base layer is gonna be a little bit different. You can, I'm gonna turn off a couple of these things, because. Um, if you want to turn stuff off, you just press it again and away it goes. So now we've got, here we are at the confluence right in here. Um, and I guess, so there's, there's three types of layers. There's blanket layers that cover everything. There's polygon layers, that like the fire one or the community watershed one that just shows you a piece. And then there's point data. So things like, um, like where schools are, hospitals, stuff like that. If I turn the schools on, hopefully our college is on here. <laughs> this isn't our college. Where are we? Okay. So the schools, you might imagine, will be in our social, social education and learning. We can turn on our colleges. Fingers crossed. Ah, oh, here we are. <laughs> we found ourselves at very least. Just like all the other ones, uh, there'll be um, information if there's links. So we've got a link to probably the college website. There might also be links to a report. Um, various different things uh, with that. Um, and the final thing I'll show you, if you just uh, go back to the uh, data layer. So again, I just clicked on this data thing. And we've got, um, if you just want some basic information on what this data means, there's info tab on the far left. Gives you a description of what it is, where we got the data. 
So this is a forest fire occurrence in 1919 and 2012. From data BC, covers the entire, scope, entire uh, RDI area or digital basin, and some information on the, the quality and stuff like that. I've already showed you the table tab. If you've made any graphs uh, that are related to this, this layer, they'll be here. You can click on the graph and it'll show you this graph on the fire history. And, and so you'll see back in the, in the 20s and 30s, there's a lot of big fires, forest fire suppression, and people were burning a lot of stuff so they could look at the ore underneath. And then it went down, and then we've got a couple of spikes in 2003. So if there's any um, graphs uh, associated with it, you can look at those. And then if you want more detail on any of these layers, there's uh, a reports tab and you'll get a, a one to two page PDF giving you a lot more detail. This is our first attempt, and so we want to hear back about what's missing. 